Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here and I am back on some Assassin's Creed Valhalla and today I'm going to be showing you guys this awesome build that I've been playing with for the longest time. To be honest with you, I don't even know what I would call this build. It is a heavy spamming attack build, but it's also a stun build because the heavy attacks with this build is able to stun enemies very quickly and you're going to see that in this gameplay. But also this is a combo finisher build. I'm using a lot of things to give me synergy with combo finishers, and it is great. This build is absolutely crazy good, and whenever I do get these stuns, which you're going to see me be able to get these stuns extremely quickly against bosses and big enemies, and even small enemies, I'm able to do massive damage, like right there. That's a lot of damage, 2436, because I got that crit when the enemy was stunned. I'm going to do the same thing against the boss here in a moment. And I'm going to be able to take off a huge chunk of the boss's health because I'm able to crit the boss when it's stunned. It's such a nice thing about this build. Now, a couple things I should actually say. First of all, this is actually a single dagger build. I am dual wielding, but the offhanded weapon I have on right now, I'm not actually using the weapon at all. And I'm really just attacking with my dagger and that's it. Now, you can technically dual wield if you want. You can dual wield daggers with this. You can put a hammer in your offhand. I'm going to talk a little bit about that because there are other options that you can use, especially early on in the game. But the reality is, I just personally think that using a single dagger is much better because the attack is so fast. You're able to spam your heavy extremely quickly with a single dagger compared to dual wielding. And that's including basically dual wielding daggers or whatever it might be. Check this out. Huge damage and just flat out murders the boss. I mean, that is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Now, another thing about this is the finishers. You're able to get finishers extremely quickly with daggers. But when you're single wielding a dagger, it's really fast. Because it only requires two heavy attacks with your dagger to get into the heavy combo finisher which is going to have a lot of synergy with like the different runes i'm using and the armor i'm using so that is something but there's other ways you can also get into your heavy combo finisher with the dagger you can do a running sprinting attack and then immediately go into the heavy combo finisher you can also do things like dive of the valkyrie which is an amazing ability that does really great stun aoe damage which has great synergy with this but if you do your heavy attack right afterwards, you can actually get your finisher off, which is really great about Dive of the Valkyries. Now, another thing I should actually bring up is that you should be able to get this build going very early on in the game. It shouldn't be very difficult because the armor I'm using should be easy to get, like the moment you get to England. The dagger I'm using is in a somewhat high level area, but a lot of people will go and get it right away. It's a great dagger. That is good for a lot of different things. And the offhand weapon I'm using, which I actually have a couple I'll talk about, but the one I'm using now and then the other one I would probably recommend for early game, it comes from Norway. You can get it like in the very first area of the game. So this build is pretty easy to get together early on and it will absolutely destroy everything. Like this is a great build. It works well against normal enemies. It works well against animals. It works great against bosses. It just is a great, great build. It might not be the craziest combo. It's a very simple, easy build because all you're doing is just spamming heavy attacks and you are benefiting from doing these finishers. Plus, you're getting these stuns. And then once you drain the defense of enemies, they really are pretty helpless. It's absolutely crazy. Alrighty, so now I'm going to tell you everything that you're going to want to know about this build. I'll break it down with all of the gear and the abilities. Basically, anything you need to know, I'm going to go over in great details. Alrighty, well let's go in again into this. Now, the main weapon is a single dagger. And we're using, in my opinion, the best dagger in the game, which is the Centunger's Claw. Now, the thing is, this is the Hidden One's Dagger. And you find these for like exploring and getting the hidden one's treasure. And you can pretty much get these right away once you get to England. They are in towns for the most part. This particular one is actually in pretty much like the highest power area to go. 
But the good news is you actually don't have to fight anybody to get it. And I think most people at this point probably already have this particular dagger. But just in case you don't, or if you're brand new and you're looking for a good build to get right away, this is going to be a little bit southwest of your settlement. It's pretty far, but you're going to eventually come down to this town down here, which is Winchester. And if we zoom in on the town, and it's 250 power. But like I said, you don't have to actually fight anybody for this. But there is the Hidden Ones icon there. You got to basically go there. It's like a tomb. You need to explore it. And at the very end, you should be rewarded with the dagger. And this is a very great weapon. Any dagger will work for this build. Because we are using the dagger because of the fast, heavy attacks that you can do. But also because of the finishers. You'll only require two heavy attacks to get into your finisher. Which most other weapons is at least three heavy attacks and those heavy attacks are fairly slow with most weapons like a hammer or an axe or something like that or with the dagger it's really quick and it's only two heavy attacks to get your finisher so that's another great thing about the dagger so any dagger would work but this is the best one it's got a great effect on it you get increased critical damage for each hit up to 10 times and that goes all the way up to 18.2, which is very good. Now, another thing about daggers is that daggers have really good critical chance. That is great. We want to get criticals if we can. It's nice. They do a lot of damage, obviously, especially if the enemy is stunned. So that's something as well. Now, the major rune I have in this is amazing, but... I do want to say something about major runes in general, and it's the same with my power level. I know some people are going to look at me and they go, well, you're a maximum power level. Of course, this is a great build because you're at maximum power level. How could it not be? That is true. Being maximum power is great. Don't get me wrong, but I've been using this build for a very long time, and it's been good the entire time. That is the same thing as well when it comes to these major runes. I have some really good ones for this build. If you are missing these, don't feel too bad. It's going to not be as good, obviously, because you do want to eventually get these if possible. But there are other replacements you could put in here, and it should work fine. It's not make or break is what I'm saying if you don't have these major runes. But this particular one is very good. Increase attack after a... Combo finisher, it doesn't matter what combo finisher it is, heavy or light. But the point is, is that the reason why this one is so good is because it gives you 15 attack at maximum stacks, which isn't like the craziest thing, but the duration of each stack is insane. It's 25 seconds, so it's very easy to keep this going forever. And by the way, each time you refresh it, it actually will refresh the duration, so you should in theory like have this going forever like it is super super good now the reason why i'm bringing that up is because there's another one which is increased critical damage after a finisher up to five times both of them are very good the critical damage i believe is 20 critical damage you can actually look because there's a weapon that actually has that effect and we can take a look at it and it's up to 20 critical damage but the duration of these is only 10 seconds. So there's a major difference between this one and the attack one. The attack one is much better just for that duration. It is awesome. Now I do want to give you a hint about major runes and also great minor runes if you don't know about this. But there comes a point in the game when the merchants will start to sell major runes and great minor runes. So what you can do, whenever the merchant inventory is going to reset, which it will happen by you playing. I don't know when it happens, but I just know like eventually after playing for a little bit, I go, okay, the merchant's inventory should reset by now. You can go up to the merchant and then save the game right before you talk to the merchant. Do not talk to the merchant until you save it. Then you talk to the merchant, check out the inventory. And if you don't like the inventory, including the runes, you can reload your save and it's going to totally refresh the inventory of the merchant. And you can keep doing that until the merchant sells some really good runes for you. That is what I have done to get most of all of my really good major and minor runes. I've literally sat there 
and reloaded my save until they were actually selling what I wanted. So that is something that you can do. Now, let's talk about my other weapon, which I'm not using. I'm not actually attacking with this weapon. This is the Bone Biter. Now, you get this from Norway. I'm not exactly sure where. I just know that I got it, I think, like, in the very first raid I ever did. So everybody should probably have this. And the truth is, is that this is a pretty decent weapon to start the game. But I'm not attacking with it. You could actually do the offhand attack if you wanted to. I do like the offhand attack for the great axis. But I really just want this for the effect. Because the effect is awesome. You get increased stun after a heavy hit up to 10 times. And that actually goes up to 25 stun. That is crazy. Now, the duration isn't the greatest thing. It's only five seconds, but you can easily keep that going. Whenever I am doing my heavy spam, I'm getting one hit, and then I do the finisher. That's two hits, and I can easily dodge an attack or even get hit by the enemy, and then I can go ahead and do another hit and keep it going. And the more and more I do that, the more and more stun that I get, and man, this really does pay off. So I really love this weapon just to have in my offhand. You don't necessarily have to have this in the offhand if you can get the major rune. Because I do have the major rune for this effect. You can find that. But I honestly don't want to put that in because instead what I do is I put in the major rune, which is actually increased speed after each hit up to 10 times. Now, once again, it's not the end of the world if you don't have this major rune, but that also really helps because that really ups my speed by a lot, and it allows me to just spam those heavy attacks and get more and more stacks. I can get my finisher stacks up really quickly, and I can get that stun stacks up, so that's just really great. Now, the minor rune I have in this is heavy damage, and I have stun, and I didn't even bring this up, but... The minor ones in this one is actually just double heavy damage. Obviously, you want as much heavy damage as possible. And I'm trying to get as much stun as possible. So in my bow, for example, I have stun. And if we actually take a look at it, let's actually look at the stats real quick. My heavy stat is actually at 137. Now, by the way, it used to be only at 74 before this recent patch because the numbers were all messed up. And there is a weapon that would boost your heavy damage by a ridiculous amount. And I used to use that weapon. And I would potentially recommend that weapon still for very early on in the game. Because it could be very good. But I've noticed that ever since the patch has come out, I feel like that weapon has been almost nerfed. Because I think that the heavy damage I have right now is so high. Even if I can boost it by a ridiculous amount, I don't really feel like my damage is going up all that much. Or my stun damage, because that's another thing that heavy damage will do. Flight damage, heavy damage will improve your damage of your heavy attacks and the stun damage of heavy attacks. So that's important for this build because we do want to get stun damage. And your melee damage will just improve your melee damage and your attack will improve all your damage. So that's basically the difference between all of those different damage sources. Now, let's actually go ahead and talk about this other weapon, because there's another weapon you can get in Norway, which I was using for the longest time. I still think it's great, and that is actually the Warhammer. This is a hammer you can get in Norway. It's the very first hammer in the game, and the effect is amazing. You get increased heavy damage after a heavy finisher. So if you combine this with a dagger and you're doing the heavy finisher, you're going to be getting more heavy damage. Now, at first when I was using this and at the time my heavy damage was like 74, 30 heavy damage was a lot. That's a lot of bonus heavy damage. And I could actually feel like my damage was going up by a lot. But now that my heavy damage is like so high, when I'm using this, I don't really feel like my damage is really going up for using this. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't use this, but basically, I just don't feel like I'm benefiting from this like I used to. 
It might be the patch. I'm not exactly sure. But this is a great weapon, especially for the early game when your heavy damage is super low. It's got a 20 second duration, which is great as well. That's a very, very good duration. Now for super end game, because I will bring this up, you could actually use Thor's hammer. If you actually look at this, this will actually give you some stun. But on the normal hit, you get a 33% chance of the special effect triggering. On a finisher, you have 100% chance. So that's pretty great. And of course, what this does is that it does an AoE stun effect. I'll be honest with you, though. I think it's crap. I don't really like it at all for trying to stun enemies. I much prefer my setup to stunning enemies. In fact, I just think it's much better. It's super consistent, super quick. And I also do like the Warhammer. If I'm going to choose a hammer, I'm probably just going to use the Warhammer. This is what I would personally recommend. Alrighty, so now let's talk about the bow. I actually didn't talk about it. I already said that the Major Rune, the critical damage is great, but it's only 10 seconds and that's kind of a bummer. I have stun minor runes in this this is the viper bow you can buy this from the merchant at pretty much any time if you see them selling weapons you should be able to buy the viper's bow this is one of the best bows in the game it definitely is i love the effect on it it gives increased critical chance after each hit it goes up to 10 stacks it's got the two second duration so it's just like the critical damage dagger perk but the difference is that this goes up to 30 critical chance which is a lot that is great. So this is definitely one of the best bows. Now I do want to say this because I know a lot of people might think like this and this is not the case. They look at something like this and they think, well, I don't really use the bow. You do not have to shoot enemies with the bow to get this perk to trigger. You see, I know a lot of people think of it like that. But that's not how it works. You can equip this and then melee the enemies and you will see the perk will trigger. All you ever have to do, by the way, is just pay attention to those icons that pop up. And if you see the icon popping up, then you know it works. So this is an example where you put this on, you can melee attack, you will see that icon pop up because when it says each hit, it doesn't matter how you hit the enemy. In fact, you can hit the enemy with Dive of the Valkyries, which is an ability, and that will also trigger this perk. And this perk is fantastic. Now, let's talk about the armor. I'm using the Gallo's armor, and this is a great armor. Now, you don't have to use this armor. If you've already upgraded and you've already got other good armor, like the Mentor's armor, you can also use that. That's fine. But what I like about this armor is that it really fits the theme. This is a medium armor, by the way, so it's going to have a little bit like more weight, but it also gives better defense than like lighter armors. But what this does is that it gives you increased melee resistance and it gives you increased melee damage when using finishers. So this obviously goes well with the theme. You can get up to 15 melee resistance and 15 melee damage. Now, the thing is, is that we are spamming our heavies and we're doing our heavy finisher nonstop. So we're going to get this maxed out very quickly. This has five stacks total. And the stacks last for 45 seconds. That is a very long time. You should have no problem getting the maximum stacks with this. Now, I do want to talk about how to get this armor. And I'm going to have to look this up as I'm doing it. But I have marked on the map for myself to kind of show you a little bit on where to find three pieces of it right now. And the first three pieces are in Lincolnshire which is going to be northeast of your settlement. So let's actually zoom in. And the first place I'm going to show this off is actually going to be in the town of Lincoln because this is a very easy place. It's the giant city here in Lincolnshire. And over to the left here where the X is, that's where you should find the armor in the town. And if we go a little bit east of that location, we will find this place. And the next one is there, so... I don't know. I'm not even going to try to pronounce some of this stuff, but you can kind of see. And the next one would be, let me zoom out so you can see. But the next one would be kind of southeast of Lincoln. And this is going to be a little bit northeast of your settlement. So it's not too far. And this is in a bandit camp. And I think it's the only 
treasure that's there, so should be pretty easy. Now, I do want to say that you will actually have to kill, like, a couple enemies for this, so if you're super low power, keep that in mind. But there is a skill, it's called Advanced Assassination. You can use that to kill higher power enemies if you can do it right. That can definitely help you, because I do believe there are keys that you're going to have to get if you want to actually get some pieces of this armor. And that means that you're going to have to steal the keys from the guards, or you have to kill the guards. Keep that in mind. Now, the two that are in S's are actually at outposts. Now, the first one is going to be south again from the settlement, and this is going to be east of London. So, right there, that's London. And if we zoom in, this is going to be an outpost, and I believe it's the one over here on the right is what you're looking for. And then the other one is over here. This is another outpost. And you can basically see it there. If I zoom out, you can see the settlement. So you get a good idea of where you need to go. But that is how you get every piece of this armor. And like I said, this is a very, very good armor because it has great synergy with this. But the major rune I have in this, I really like as well. Now, once again, it's not make or break if you don't have the major runes, so keep that in mind. But the one I have in here is increased speed when surrounded by two or more enemies. That's great. I don't know how much that gives in terms of a speed bonus, but that definitely helps, and it's amazing. Now, one thing I did want to also bring up is that there's a couple other really good runes. There's one that really fits the theme. One of those runes is Thor's rune, which gives you armor when stunning an enemy. This is going to trigger, like, easily with this build. But I will say, I believe it's 10 armor, which isn't really all that much. So I don't know about that one. But it might actually give you 10 armor for every enemy stun. I'm not sure. And there's also another one that gives you increased range resistance for doing finishers. And I don't see that one. Where is that one? Oh, here it is. Increased range resistance when hitting enemies with finishers. This also, of course, has good synergy with this build. Now, one thing I will say, every minor rune I have in here is melee damage. I did actually do what I said about saving the game at the merchants. And I went ahead and did that to get a bunch of these melee damage minor runes. But... To be honest with you, a lot of these accidentally duped. I don't know how it happened, but just randomly they were duping because I was switching these out between this armor and the mentor's armor for like a good minute. And for some reason, I started getting a ridiculous amount of these melee damage runes. So that's really cool. But once again, it's not making or break. Don't worry about it if you don't have insane melee damage. Now, let's talk about the skills, and I know that this is always a little bit complicated, but really, the number one thing you need to worry about is actually going to be you want to get the heavy dual wield skill first, because you're going to need that. I don't even know where that's at, like off the top of my head. Yeah, here it is over here. It's all the way over here. Go and get this as soon as you can, because... You're going to want it if you want to copy my build because I have a great axe in my offhand. So that is something that I would definitely recommend getting. And then outside of that, there's other really good skills to try to get early on. One would be grit. Grit is great because it gives you health back when you're taking damage. Another great one is that last chance healing. This can absolutely save your life. And the blue tree in general is great because you're going to find a lot of the Way of the Wolf. Let me find one. And Way of the Wolf is going to basically benefit you a lot with this build. This is going to give you attack, stun, crit chance. That's great. Remember, the dagger we're using is a wolf dagger. The great axe we're using is wolf. The armor we're using is wolf. Everything is wolf. So we get the full benefit from this. So getting a lot of these... Really, really good. And then, of course, the other thing you want to get is a ton of heavy damage. There is a lot of heavy damage you can find as you scroll through these. Grab all of the heavy damage you possibly can. It's super important. And another thing that you can get is actually the dagger, like, bonuses that will come from the Raven Tree. I believe all of them 
will come from the Raven Tree. That's the only bummer. But you get 5 stun, you get speed, you get crit chance. And yeah, this was super confusing, by the way. I was like asking my friends, like, what is this weapon? I'm like, what is this? And then finally I realized, oh my god, that's a dagger. Because, you know, it's a dagger. But I don't know why they won't just say dagger. It's like a Viking's dagger. But very stupid in my opinion. It had me confused. But like I said, that's the most important thing. Get the heavy dual wield. After that, get whatever skills you want. Get them all. I mean, that's just how it goes with this game. But also try to get as much of the way of the wolf as you can. And also try to get those dagger skills. Super important. Abilities. It's the same thing as before. Dive of the Valkyrie. I'm just falling more and more in love with this. It's so great for this build. It's the main skill I use more than anything else. Just because it's got great versatility. It's got great stun if you upgrade it. I will put a link in the description. If you want to just use the guide there to find like different abilities. Definitely get both levels of this. Super good. Harpoon Impalement. Same thing. Super, super good. I love this. Get this. It's one of the best abilities. If you can throw enemies into other enemies or into walls. It just does insane damage. It's amazing. Another one that's good is Poison Strike and Fire Strike. Both of these have gotten actually a nice little buff recently. If you are dual wielding, and I'm not, you know, technically, but if you are dual wielding, whenever you use these, it will light both of your weapons on fire now. That's awesome. That's a big buff in my opinion for like dual daggers or dual axes or dual spears, whatever it might be. It's a great buff. You're going to apply fire or poison a lot quicker. So these are what I use for my abilities for the most part. And to be honest with you, I don't really use my ranged abilities at all. You know, like there's some cool ones, like summoning the wolf can be kind of cool, I guess. I do use like incinerary powder trap just to open up like different doors. If it's like a puzzle with a stone breakable wall, I use it for that. But that's about it when it comes to range stuff. But, I mean, that's basically it when it comes to the build, guys. I'm not going to show any more gameplay. I wanted to show most of the gameplay in the beginning. That way, people would get a good look at it and then be more interested in the actual, like, build itself. It's great, man. It really is a very good build. There's a lot of different things you can do. Like, there's different combinations you can use if you need certain things. But, at the end of the day... You will absolutely destroy big enemies. You'll stun them no problem. You shouldn't have any problems stunning bosses with this build. And you will do some crazy damage as well. Like if you're able to get the stun. And especially if you can get a crit off of an enemy when they're stunned. You're going to do some great damage. I love the synergy of this build. And it's kind of unique because most builds you see are going to be. Dual dagger or dual axes, dual spear, you know, there's a bunch of stuff like that. The armor is generally the same. Oh, I'll just use the mentor's armor. This is something that's like pretty unique. It's simple, don't get me wrong, because all we're doing is spamming heavy, but it is different. And to me, I like that. I think that's really cool. Alrighty, guys. Well, I would really appreciate it if you could give this video a like. It definitely helps me out. And make sure to subscribe for future videos. That would be absolutely epic. Thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day. And peace. So.